It's time to feel the rage. Welcome to Film Rage, where we talk movies in theaters, streaming, and classic films as well. Directors and actors, beware as you cannot hide from the rage. My name is Bryce, and I'm part of the Film Rage crew, which also includes Jim. Hey there, Jim. Hey, hey. And the man that knows a thing or two about a thing or two, it's Murray. Yo. Hey there, my man. So, with the introductions out of the way, oh, let's rage on. Okay, well, thanks to all who've been supporting us. If you love our independent podcast, please support us and join. Apparently, there's no one in our community anymore because oh. Buy Me a Coffee dropped all of our members. So, Bastards. just giving just any of our listeners who's happening to listen, you can go back and sign back up on it. So, so yeah, I was going to say join the Film Rage community by joining our membership at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Film Rage YYC. Because all members will get special episodes and content only for members. And all members that sign up will get limited edition Film Rage merch item. If you cannot support us by joining our membership, you can still ask us to watch a terrible movie. And we will. Thanks to all the countries and listeners from everywhere, including Interspace, wherever that is. We appreciate you all more than you know. To infinity and beyond. Movies are back at Canyon Meadow Cinemas. We are open for your viewing pleasure with great new films opening weekly. All health-regulated protocols are in effect for a safe and enjoyable experience. And don't forget, we should be your first choice for your next birthday party or special event. Can't make it to the cinema? We got you covered. Order concessions from our online store, and you can either choose curbside pickup or get them delivered via Skip the Dishes, Uber Eats, or DoorDash. For more details, go to canyonmeadowscinemas.ca. Here at CMC, we would like to thank you for your continued support, and we are looking forward to seeing you at the movies. We're streaming, Jim. And even Murray streamed on the weekend. Streaming. But also some football. Lots of football. Okay. So first up, uh, we watched at least two-thirds of us, I think. Two-thirds of us, Murray, you didn't take part in... Uh, you didn't partake in the Affleck. Two words, Ben Affleck. No, I know. I not. Ben <laughs> Affleck. Two of the sweetest words on the face of the earth. Yeah, we watched The Tender Bar on Prime. Dumb dumb? No, there's, there's no dumb dumb with Prime. <laughs> Except for the ones who have Amazon Prime. They're dumb dumbs. <laughs> Sign me up. So, The Tender Bar... Uh, ben Affleck and Ty Sheridan star in The Tender Bar, directed by George Clooney. Coming-of-age story that has been told thousands of times before. The thing that elevates this is the performances from Affleck and Sheridan, as well as their interaction with the rest of the cast. Affleck's timing and delivery show the tremendous actor that he is. Sheridan holds his own opposite Affleck as this uncle and nephew, this is our second uncle and nephew movie, and in- yes, <laughs> it's like you'll crazy. hear more about There's that. There's going to be like a floodgate <laughs> opening here soon. <laughs> At any rate, <clears throat> Sheridan holds his own opposite Affleck as this uncle and nephew have some great interactions throughout the film. The movie is predictable and unoriginal, but it also is sweet and funny and well acted. It is well intentioned and complete and competently directed by Clooney. But aside from the performances. There is nothing to separate it from the rest of the pack when it comes to this type of film. That makes it meh. Aww. Even though Affleck was fantastic. Well, let's hear what I had to say about it. First off, motherfucking Christopher Lloyd stole every single scene. I there was only one does. actor in this movie 
And if you were in the same room as Christopher Lloyd, I'd never know if there was a second one. That being said, the acting was all great, aside from the period piece acting of Ben Affleck, which, as usual, was very Queen Elizabeth chamber pot adjacent. It's hard to come off seeing a film like Come On, Come On having Uncle Goodness, no matter what Uncle type film follows Come On, Come On, it doesn't stand a chance. But this did a pretty good job. Music was great. In fact, the music was fantastic. Great names for the characters that they had for these characters in this film. I love that part about it. In fact, it took a while to sink in, but I guess I kind of actually really liked the writing a lot, actually. So cleverly written, in particular, the scene with JR and his girlfriend and her parents was an epic scene as any relationship scene ever done. Um, it didn't come quite close to the scene in Beanpole, but... It was pretty close. It was good. It was very well, very well written. I don't want to dwell on it, so we'll just move on from that. But the film was a bit tropey, as Bryce had kind of alluded to at times. But if you know me and characters, there were also developed so well. By the time we get to the end, the cliches of typical period piece, single mother, hard life success stories, it didn't really annoy me as much as it usually would. So how do I feel about this film? Everything hung on the edge of the ending. And in spite of Ben Affleck, this film was still a meh. I did have a favorite line. Go ahead. Don't tell anybody I'm a good grandpa or everyone will want one. There you go. And again, yeah, it was delivered by Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd was fine. He was... He was I transcendent. Don't under, I don't understand how you can watch Ben Affleck's performance and not say that that was spectacular. I thought it was probably one of the weakest performances I've ever seen of him, to be quite honest. I didn't feel his character had any emotion whatsoever, like he normally can't show. And I just felt it was, yeah. His, his, I think, I think his, you go his into every acting. movie with Ben Affleck with a bias. I don't go into bed. I, I, I saw the accountant. It was Mondo, and I, he was good in it. I don't understand how you could watch his last two performances and not think that they were Mondo. The, he was he, he was, was completely awful, awful in the last duel. He and, was not. And, and if I go back one more movie where he was playing the washed up basketball player, he was even he worse. He was fantastic in he that was, too. He's never been fantastic. You have. I don't understand. He what you, is. You've got some sort of him weird beside, block when it comes to Ben Him Affleck. beside Matt Damon, it's like night don't, and day. Don't sit there and just listen to the chatter that's going on in the world and just I go don't along with what everybody else is I'm saying. Not, I don't have to listen to chatter. I make my own chatter. Right. And I'm, I'm chattering right now that Ben Affleck is not a good actor. Ben Affleck is here, here. one of the finest actors of our generation. Mm, perhaps my generation's a little different than yours. I guess Just so. like the Who said, my generation. Mm -hmm. My generation. Mine or any my other generation. Mine or any other generation. Yeah, no. He's bad. He, he is has, so he's, good. he's not quite root vegetable, but there's many times where he's very root vegetable adjacent. Yes. In fact, I think of him more as chamber pot adjacent. I'm completely baffled by this opinion. No. That, and, I, and I know you're not the only one that shares it. There's yeah. so many people that I just say don't this, find any emotion in his It's not just the two people at this table. Yeah, there's two. There's oh, a large majority there's a ton. of the world. And, yeah. and they're all wrong. This. No, uh, they're no, no, they're, they're not How wrong. How can everyone yeah. be wrong? They're well, all wrong. Well, as far as he's concerned. I mean, I love Keanu Reeves and everything, but... I know he's not a great actor. No, he's not. <laughs> and maybe that's what Bryce has got his blinders on. Maybe, maybe he I just have, likes Ben maybe. Affleck no, as a person. I no, no, I got no he has blinders. a habit of cheating on women I and, think and doing all kinds of things like yes. that. So. I, I, what does that have to do and with defend, the price of And China? trying to defend his movies on social media. Yeah, he's, well, put it nicely, he's a dirtbag. Oh, there we go. In real life, he's a dirtbag. I don't it's know. A, nice a, lot, a lot of great mm -hmm. actors lot, Nice are thing dirtbags. I can say about him, because I'd like to say a lot more. But we'll leave it at that. I want to keep it. PG. It was the, what we can agree on it was is meh. that movie was meh. There you go. Yeah, it was meh. Murray. I did already. You missed it. <laughs> Just keep doing it. <laughs> and Ben Affleck was also Mondo. <laughs> well, I want to rage about it. I didn't see the movie. So. Nice. All righty. Well, we also saw on Netflix. 
Mother dumb, slash dumb. android. In a post-apocalyptic world, following an android uprising, a young pregnant woman and her boyfriend desperately search for safety to give birth to their child. Ugh. And I feel silly just reading that description. No spoilers. <laughs> that was the whole Bryce, movie. Mr. Holland. Um, Opus. Yeah, Mr. Holland's this, Opus. This movie was pretty bad. And unfortunately, I'm the one who picked it, but that's all, that's all, the, Netflix was, that's all the Netflix was offering this weekend. So oh. we have to take what they give us, unfortunately. Yeah, just like when we get invaded by aliens and the probe wands come out, we had to take it. Now, as much as I love Chloe Grace Moretz, this was just not her best work. <laughs> Other than having to walk miles and miles in a fat suit. Nice. Uh, unless she was actually pregnant. Which now, that's she was. acting. That was acting. Um, yet she was still the best thing about it. Her boyfriend was kind of a dumbass. I like And them. seemed to routinely do stupid things to put them in danger. Eh. Uh, I was really disappointed not to see more androids killing humans. Because, you know, it's a war. Mm. It was just them in the forest by themselves. Like, where the hell are all the androids? Uh, and this film had a lot of walking in it. So much walking. It reminded yeah, me. This wasn't any good. <laughs> of the first few seasons of Walking Dead, all walking and no killing, and no dead. <laughs> and the ending was stupid. It's not bad enough to rage about, but it's a very low man. <laughs> what? Yeah. Really? You can't yeah. rage about it? You no. lit every word in your yeah, review. You're being nice just again. Disappointed. I thought we've had this discussion. You're we not did. allowed to be nice we just did. for nice's sake. But it just I didn't hate the movie. I just thought it was okay. meh. I hated the movie. Yeah, no surprise. <laughs> um, I don't even want to talk about it. Chloe Grace Moretz stars in this apocalyptic survival story that starts out with a reasonable premise, albeit a tired and worn out one. Uh, the movie was just bland. It was forgettable. The fact that I was able to keep my eyes open is a minor miracle. It was a rage. I don't, I don't want to talk about this movie. It was, <laughs> it was boring. Why would you not want to talk about this movie? Because everything was just <laughs> in it. It was. It wasn't. Are, are you sure about that? I'm positive. There's nothing I liked about it. Not one thing. I bet if Ben Affleck was in, it, he would have loved. Yeah, it. Yeah, I probably would have loved. It, it would have made it to Matt probably. Probably. Ben Affleck so, made the Android. He would have loved it. You know what? I don't even think Ben Affleck could have saved this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, he. Yeah, he would have made it worse. So, uh, motherfucking iRobot finally completed its job. <laughs> Although, damn, what happened to Chloe's acting? Or maybe yeah. as an adult, she's just not good anymore. I don't um, know. She this she was think, she was awful in this. Problem is, she did Neighbors too. I think, which is kind of was the beginning of the. Yeah, year. that was also bad. I do love my apocalyptic movies, as you all know. So I'm always going to give some slack for these type of films. I loved some of the battle scenes and the android fight scenes. I also liked the relationship of the two main characters. It seemed real and fraught with disagreements. And their relationship wasn't perfect. But, ugh. They get to the safe zone, quote unquote. And nothing in this section seems to have make any sense whatsoever. First off, to Murray's point about her boyfriend being an idiot. Who, who goes into a macho off? To ask a stupid question. These dudes are obviously getting drunk and half naked. Train killer. And he's and he goes in there and says, Hey, I got a question about I something a, stupid. I need a ride. And then and then all of a sudden he has to fight for his life. Like that 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 was like the dumbest scene on any movie I've ever seen. I'm just like, you know why? How are you still alive nine months later in an android apocalypse? Exactly. Like it made it made no sense. It was all just bland and forgettable. Yeah, and, and everything that happened at the whole army base uh, when you get to the safe zone oh, yeah, no, was, was completely idiotic. It was stupid. Yeah. I started actually thinking, though, when that point happened in the movie, maybe I don't actually like apocalyptic films anymore. Mm -hmm. hmm. Also, what did they eat for nine months? She is pregnant, and at no point do we see them hunt, forage, or go to a grocery store. They're basically just walking around with backpacks, in the forest, yeah. and and I can't help but thinking, and no okay, did you not them. allocate anything to the fact that they, at some point they might have had to look for something or fish or hunt, hunt or whatever? Traps. Like I just those yeah. those things in movies like this just yeah. make me fucking crazy. It's yeah. part of it's one of the biggest reasons old did not make anything yeah. but my rage list. I loved old robot. No, you liked old. 
You liked it. You did not love it. Don't love, try and I love don't try to it. fake your memories to please to make me angry I'll, with I'll you. I love the one scene where her arms are like breaking and stuff. That yeah, was good. that was that was good, but everything else was <laughs> terrible. Sorry. Anyway, robot chase scenes, although they are fun because it's like fast running zombies, but unlimited bullets, bullets and robots that outrun motorbikes. It just seemed a little inconsistent with what was happening at the beginning of the movie when the robots couldn't keep up to motorcycles. But apparently now they can. Acting overall was terrible. Although I did like Raul Castillo, who played Arthur, who was basically acting like a robot. So I actually didn't mind his acting. He was bland. Yeah, but that's he was supposed to be a bland robot. Uh, the good, creepy robots, robot fights, apocalyptic theme, and some suspense. Foot stomping good time. No suspense. The bad, the acting, the realism, or the lack thereof, the plot, or goal of the film. And pretty much everything else. The predictable was, of course, as Murray had alluded to, the ending. Overall, I started realizing I don't actually like apocalyptic films anymore. Or maybe I didn't like them as much as I used to. Mm. They don't make them like they used to. Yeah. So uh, eventually this just kept getting more rage until it was a full-blown nice. outbreak of rage. That's what I wanted to hear. Or yeah. what I actually meant to say was, this movie was a rage. Yes. This movie was a rage. Yes. Okay. Quinn Pack. Chloe goes to rescue her hubby, but then she gets caught and then calls for Arthur for help. Whatever. He just comes in and kills everybody. Of course. And so two things. Number one, why did she go in at all in the first place? If he could just go in and kill everybody. Good question. And then... The second part is, and you know what? I don't care if I spoil anything. People who are listening, if you haven't seen this movie, first off, don't. And the second thing is, so then we find out later that he's evil. Yes. And we're thinking to ourselves still. So evil. Still, I'm thinking, okay, even that plot didn't make sense that she didn't figure out then. And, you know, if you're wearing a suit that supposedly protects you from their rays and you're not wearing a helmet... How does that work? Yeah, you, <laughs> it's just like... You put way too much thought into all this. Just, I don't know why you're even thinking about I this stuff. I just don't get she it. She was just that stupid. I mean, how did they... Whoever wrote this... You know, mm. we've talked a lot about the bad acting. We've talked about the bad script. But who the hell directed this? Because this this was Madison awful. Tomlin. Yeah. He, he wrote and directed. He, he wrote and he, she, they are acted and directed Matt, well. Matson Matt Tomlin. Yeah, Tomlin. yeah no. This was terrible. Yeah. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and to add further spoilers, the thing I did really rage about was, yeah, she's in this army hospital in the safe zone, gave birth to her baby. Well, they cut it out of her, basically. Which is like yeah, that's the chop, whole thing. Chop. But cut. then, then mm-hmm. the bad guy that you just mentioned basically Arthur. starts killing people. Yeah, because he's bad. Where the hell are all the goddamn army people with the guns? How about the fact? How about the fact that she just ha- actually got this baby cut out of her? They stitched her up, and now she's like running around. Like, well, yeah, she's in a wheelchair. She's in a wheelchair. And she's fighting off the androids that no, the army guys. No with one hand, she wouldn't yeah. have even gotten out. Of with the one bed. hand, that, that was that, pretty honestly, awesome. She wouldn't a have even got out of the bed. Army guys that. apparently couldn't take this guy down. Like, yeah. what the hell? That yeah. didn't. Make me you know what I was really hoping though. I was really kind of hoping it was going to kind of be like an android baby. It's kind of like that you find cool. out later that she had had sex with a sex bot before they actually went crazy. And that her baby was actually oh, half baby, oh, half yeah, android. That, that would have made it so much better. <laughs> this would have been made it so much better. Exactly. And then her baby was there to save the planet. It's like the old V TV show. It's yeah. like the baby's born and it's like half alien. Yes, exactly. Thanks. I Marie. would like to put forward a vote to move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I second that vote. Excellent. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess we're we're out of streaming now. <laughs> we stopped the dance. Sadly, things are pretty bleak at the cinema these days. What do you mean? Uh, we have to watch the three five five. Yeah, we're. At, when, wait. Well, at least our cinemas are still open. That's true. For now. But when a top secret weapon falls into mercenary hands, a wild card CIA agent joins forces with some other peoples, peoples. to to take stuff down. Yeah. 
This this was the longest made for TV pilot oh. of the female version of the Expendables. It was the fast, or at least that's time. what I got for the two years, two hours of it felt like two years, two hours of three five five. There was a few three few good things in this movie, and Bryce may argue with me. Number that's one is Lupita is Lupita Nyong'o. She is brilliant in everything. It doesn't matter what <laughs> she's doing. No, the motherfucking kick ass tastic. Of Diane Kruger as Marie. I want to either marry her or be beaten up by her. I don't care what, as long as it's one of them. I'm with you. The fact one out of every ten times I got surprised by something that seemed like it actually might happen in real life. That one time out of ten was actually pretty good. And finally, the other really good thing about this was Penelope Cruz. No. Yeah, she was great. The rest was awful. The script was transparent with every spyism and trope ever created from the Mission Impossible plot steal to the Expendables dialogue. The action scenes were filmed in what I can only consider blurry vision is what I'm going to call it as they as were the chase scenes so that you had no clue what was happening during any action scene in the whole movie. And it's supposed to be somewhat of an action movie. I laughed quite a few times at the movie. But not because I was supposed to. It was because I was laughing at the movie itself. Mm. Just waiting to hear now that the 355 will be appearing Friday nights as a weekly series for Fox. The ending of this, just like most of the rest of the film, was also so completely terrible. Let's just make sure I understand it. And there is a spoiler coming. So not that it should surprise you, but let me make sure I got this right. Two months later, all five of the 355 leave their homes for a five-minute rendezvous to say goodbye to the bad guy. Then they leave the place without waiting for the quote-unquote team to take him into custody. And high fives all around. Yeah, this was the most worst acting by Jessica Chastain as well. And this is the same person that only a couple months ago I said deserves an Oscar for Tammy Faye. The most worst acting. Yes, the most worst acting. And she she was she played a brilliant Tammy Faye. Yeah, just like her acting, this movie was a rage. Cool. All Jada. right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't hate it as much as you did. Oh yeah! Why? <laughs> oh yeah! Did did you say it was a rage? He did. Yeah, I can keep saying it. Okay, that's okay. Rage. Wait, let me do my robot voice again. This movie was a rage. Yeah, you don't need to no do robots. that ever again. This movie was uh, a rage. Okay, three five five. Ladies kicking ass. Were awesome. They? Uh, well, we had some girl on girl action, which you know I like that. Mm-hmm. Fighting, I mean. Could you see anything? Because it was all blurry. Oh, well, that's true, but Danny Kruger was awesome. She was. Um, Danny Kruger, who I love in everything, and she really gets me going when she starts singing that German. And yes, I tell you, man. the German. I don't understand this Diane Kruger love fest that we're having today. Okay, when you put her beside Ben Affleck in a movie, there people would not know Ben Affleck was exactly. in the movie. That is a complete prevarication. <laughs> nope. That is what truth... Uh, yeah. It's a truth bomb. Anyway, I love her. Uh, to borrow a quote from another review, well, I stole it. Uh, the 355 amasses some of the most talented and electrifying actresses in the world, then squanders them in a generic and forgettable action picture. That's great. Which I think That's sums a great it up steal, perfect. Murray. It sums it up perfect. Yeah, that does pretty much. Uh, this film had the same problem as the only Daniel Craig Bond film that I saw mm-hmm. uh, Skyfall. It wrapped things up in a neat little package at the end of the first hour. And you think basically everything's all good. And then they just start throwing more story in. Complicated story and and story. Yeah, it's like, well, why did you bother wrapping it up halfway through? It's like like a bad TV episode. It was was a bad TV episode. With a cliffhanger. Um, Now the story is basic. You know, bad guys want a piece of technology to rule the world. Good guys, or in this case, girls try to stop them. They almost do. Then the bad guys get it anyway. 
and the good guys have to get it back. Mm -hmm. That's a little back and forth. Spy, there is, doesn't they call that spy intrigue? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, very little of this film surprised me. Considering it's a spy thriller, that's not a good thing. I guess we shouldn't have expected anything better from the guy who did X Men Dark Phoenix. Oh, yeah, that was same that director. Bad. I didn't mind it. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. It was a man. He's genuinely bad with fight sequences. Yeah, the I fight sequences a real problem in a movie that has a lot of them filmed in blurry I vision. Would, I would make the argument that Jessica Chastain is very bad in fight sequences. Also true. She's also bad a acting in Ava, this. Ava, Ava, she was. It was the same. Very. Yeah, robotic. It just uh, does not uh, work. Yeah. What? Did you say robotic? Yeah, robotic. just stop. Uh, yeah, set pieces are chopped to bits in an effort to hide stunt doubles. Punches looked obviously pulled. And somehow these globe-trotting badass <laughs> women are all made to look awkward when carrying a gun. You just made me think of uh, five of them. Wasn't there five? I don't yeah. know. On, a, five on, on playing against the globe-trotters. <laughs> well, somebody also made a comparison to uh, the Uma Thurman... Uh, What's her name? From the, the Pulp Fiction. The Fast Fox 5. Uh, from Kill Bill? Pilot. No, from oh. Pulp Fiction. Oh. You know the one she never got, that she never oh, got to make? Oh, right, yeah. Because it's Fast Fox 5. It was five of them. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> Fast Fox 5. Uh, I did enjoy parts of this film. Just not enough. It was a man. You're so... Murray, can't rage. let's got to find you that rage button. I really oh, enjoyed Dan Kruger. You were the most and generous person Diane I know. Dan Kruger actually reminded me of, like, Real James Bond. She was the the most Bondish of any of them. I have no idea. Like, she was awesome. she was like she was, driving. Uh, nobody was awesome. In what this. do you call it? Front end loaders through like the dock full of people, and she yet she didn't care who was around. Yeah, she, she was awesome. She was kicking ass. No, yeah, the, and other ones were, the other ones were all like spies trying to hide and stuff, but she was just out there. She was like, I'm gonna go punch some dicks, and she worked alone. So yeah, I'd like based I'd, on her, it was a myth. If she was not in it. It would have been a rage. Okay. Okay. Everybody in this was terrible. Jessica Chastain was terrible. Penelope Cruz was terrible. Lupita, Lupita Nyong'o was Bite terrible. Bite your tongue. That's my Diane future Kruger wife. was terrible. They were all terrible. I don't know what you guys were watching. How can you tell January is here? Crap like this hits the screen. The 355 is a cookie cutter, outdated action flick that wastes the talents of a very good cast. The story is remarkably forgettable. As you're watching, you can predict exactly what will happen with 100% accuracy. What a surprise. Her partner that they imply gets killed, but do not actually show them him getting killed, shows up later in the film. And what? what? He's actually the bad guy? Well, who could have predicted Spoiler. that? He was the bad guy. You could have knocked me over with a feather. This was bad writing with a worse ending that stretches improbability to the point of ridiculousness. It is dumb and it is boring and I hated it. It is a rage. Can we just talk about the I ending just, again? The ending was so stupid. So like, let's, let's all buy a ticket to wherever the heck they... I don't even remember. And, and, and let's all go meet there for what reason so that we can all just walk out... Do high fives. <laughs> you, you just, exactly. Do a high five and go, okay, bye. And, and Penelope <laughs> Cruz's character would never have left Columbia the rest of her no, life exactly. after this. She's, she was traumatized by the entire event. Yeah, she's going to get on a plane two months later after she goes home to her kids yep. and her husband who were almost murdered by these people. She would now be invisible. Yeah. She would never get on a plane, leave Columbia, do anything and yeah, no. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, she was and, super happy. And by the I'm way, here, and I'm going to serve you some justice. Before anybody comes to get the dude, let's just all leave and just trust that he's going to get picked yes. up. We're just, we'll just go our let's own. Let's go high five out of the street and it's, say goodbye. It's like, what is going on? It's so this was such a Oh, this was a piece of dog crap. This has to be the worst ending I think I've seen in a movie in a very, very, very long time. It was the worst everything. In I've fact, seen you know in a what? In a very, very long time. This movie was a rage. It was so bad. All oh, right. my dear Lord, it was bad. <laughs> like well, said, going from that... Times are bleak in the cinema these days. <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, what? All right. Now, going from that... Time for a little special. We talked last week about, you know what we need and we haven't done on this show yet? Is our top 10 favorite directors... Of all time. 
I didn't even believe you, so I like went back. I was like, we must have done that. Like when we were desperate for episodes. No, no, how no. Did we, we, were, not do we were doing movies. We weren't I doing directors. Know, but I thought at some point we must have. Like we were doing. No. Like, we were racking our brains. Like we got to the point where we we're doing top ten animated and top ten movies that had a dog in them, and we were like, we were desperate at the time. Top yeah. ten movies that had a street car in them, and it was like yeah. it was getting that bad. If that we didn't was, do top ten directors, if we didn't do the street car one, I'm kind of liking the idea of that one. <laughs> Let's bring that one back. Top ten movies <laughs> with a street, with a street car. car. There'll be a lot of stuff based in San Francisco, <laughs> and maybe parts of Berlin, but otherwise, yep. not a lot. Toronto. Oh, Toronto. Toronto has street cars. Yeah. Everything shot. All right. Toronto so pretty much every movie. Here I thought we were limiting ourselves. <laughs> At any rate, sorry, what were we doing this week? We're going to do our top 10. And this was this is the most difficult thing I've ever done, I got to say. But apparently it was easy for Murray. He thought he could never come up with his well, 10 favorite directors. He said, I don't have 10 favorite directors, if I seem to remember correctly. The problem is, I don't have 10 directors that I love every movie they've ever made. But that's not what you have to pick. Not a single your one favorite of these, directors. Your favorite directors. And how you came up with that list can be your secret, or you can share it with our valuable listeners. It, it, some of them are pretty obvious, and some weren't. Okay. I, I did consult a list on Google for ones that I may have forgotten. Yeah. That I liked, but. Yeah, well, the first three is in reverse order. Reverse order, thank you. Reverse order. Okay, save the the favorite to the end. Yeah, but the first three are only on here because I like most of their films, not their recent ones. Okay. Just so you know. So you're going to get a pass? Is that what you're saying? They almost didn't make my list. Uh Uh-oh. Number 10, Tim Burton. Ooh. I love Tim Burton. Yeah, Yeah, I used to. Uh, I still do. Batman, Batman Returns, and Big Fish. Those are the three I like. Nice. They were fantastic. Number nine, Ridley Scott, mm. who I liked until recently. Okay, I would agree with you Fair there. Enough. Uh, Gladiator, American Gangster, and Prometheus. Prometheus was great. Prometheus was so good. Number eight, also don't like him much anymore, Martin Scorsese. I still like Goodfellas, no, Casino, still like The Deported. You. Well, I'm on Team Murray here. Exactly. Then we got ones who I love, 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 love. All like right. every single thing they've touched oh, is mer- much, mergasms. Pretty much. Mm. For seven, mm. Ivan Reitman. Yes. Oh, okay. History of 80s comedy. That does not that surprise me in the least. He's a right Animal fan. House, Caddyshack, Ghostbusters. Just bam, bam. In that order? Or is it just and random? They, yeah, they what what change them up? It's like the order he made them. Nice. Uh, then his son, Jason Reitman. Wow. Who, if anything, is almost a better director than him. So he is higher on the list. So apparently exactly. he is. Number six, Juno, Up in the Air, and Young Adult. Very, very good movies. Yes. Yeah. I, I agree. Like, great choice. He's I good. apparently like him too until recently. And yes. number five, Did one of my favorites who sat no longer with us. No. John Hughes. Ah. I knew he'd Ferris, make your list. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Uncle Buck. Oh, yeah. Planes, trays, and automobiles. Pretty much anything with John Candy. Yes, pretty much. I'll, I'll, I'll just interrupt you. There's there's like three or four John Hughes movies that when they come on, no matter what I'm doing, what I'm if I just come across them, I just watch the rest of it. Till it's a rule. I, I, I wasn't so much the 16 Candles and Pretty in Pink. I loved 16 Candles. They, they were, pretty, I loved pretty in Pink. They were also okay. I'm they were huge, fantastic. What are you talking about? There was way too many of his movies to even put on this list. Okay, I, uh, just the, the, the three of my favorites of his. I really love the Psychedelic Furs as a band, so I there was in love with that movie too. Uh, number four, who yes. apparently is retired from directing. <laughs> what? Quentin Tarantino. Thank God. Whatever. The Kill, the kill Bills, which count as one movie, I I consider. Yes. Uh, Inglorious Bastards. So good. Yes. So Once good. upon a time in Hollywood which was so I very very good. It was so bad. You, you it liked was, it. It was Mondo. It was very long number long. three. My main guy, who was number one, pretty much my whole life. Steven Spielberg so was number one. He was, but he's uh, not anymore. Now he's old. three. He's old. So that does. Yeah. People can be old. Uh, Jaws, the Indiana Jones trilogy. Jurassic Park are the only three that I could put on here, but there's at least a dozen that I loved. His. Nice. Yeah. Well, we're limiting it to uh, three. Number two. What about West Side Story? <laughs> I haven't seen it. I have. I know you have. It was a waste of time. Please don't talk about I it. I probably would have enjoyed it, but I didn't go. That movie. Um, Sorry. <clears throat> that movie is a rage. All right. You didn't Give see it. it. Robot. It was unnecessary, though. Number two is more of a biased personal thing because, you know, I love him. I've loved him since he was four years old. Ron Howard. 
I knew it. I knew mate Ronnie would make the top three. Opie, Opie Cunningham. Opie, Opie Cunningham. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> nice. He's an even better director than he was an actor, and I loved him as an actor. I can't wait to hear your three favorite movies of his. Apollo 13. Okay. Right. Beautiful Mind. Yeah. And okay. Cinderella Man. Okay. okay. And number Russell one, there. no big surprise. He's a big Russell Crowe fan. Number one is Taika Waititi. Yes. Nice. Who has a smaller... A, group know, of films. Group of films, but, yep. you know, he's... But he you made, know what? He's he undoubted. Made, he, he made so. Ragnarok, so... Oh, he's, he's almost for, undoubted. He's forever on mine. Yeah, he's Hunt, for, Hunt for the Wilder People, Thor Ragnarok, and Jojo Rabbit. Nice. And I just saw him on Jimmy uh, Fallon's uh, That's My Jam with his girlfriend, Rita Ora. Mm-hmm. Apparently, he's a hell of a karaoke action person, There's too. nothing he can't do. Exactly. He beat the... Crap out of uh, what's her name? Oh, jeez. Eva Langoria? No, uh, I'm just she's picking a names. black woman who uh, did um, what was that Benjamin Button movie? Uh, Taraji B. Henson. Ah, nice. Yeah, mm. but yeah, I he, can't see anybody yeah, winning he against was him. Very entertaining, and he has a superstar pop girlfriend. So there, there you, you go. go. So yeah, he's that a, he's, that reason alone should make the top exactly. 10. And he's making the next Thor. He's Thor'd up. Which I can easily say is my most looking forward to movie in probably the last four years. I think I am also looking forward to that. Anyway, that's my list. As am I. Because there's a lot riding on it. There's, yeah. You know what? Taco with Titi can do no wrong. Except in the acting world. Yes. He used to be undoubted yeah. that way, too. Yes. A, he had a small blip. It's That's one of those directors that's crazy. It's, he's not going to be on my top ten. Spoiler alert. But that that's that, that doesn't even glad, make any sense. Glad he that, makes, that makes the least amount of sense of anything I that's know. ever happened ever. But, you nope. know. What ifs? You know, okay, I will, I'll save it for later, but yeah, go ahead. Okay, You're up. we we talked a little bit about this before we started to record, so I, we know secrets. But my number ten, Christopher yes. Nolan, Memento, Tenet, Inception, I freaking love, love, love his mind. His mind is fucked, and I love it. His mind confuses me. Number nine, yes, Denis Villeneuve, yeah. Polytechnic. Dune, Arrival, and yep. everything he's done. He's, in fact, undoubted. But he did do Dune. Yes, Ugh. which is the best science fiction movie ever made. Ugh. Ever. Mm. Number eight, Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, Hitchcock's got... It's Psycho. Gotta be in the Birds, game. North by Northwest. Nice. We talked about him not that long ago, and he's still undoubted. Yep. Guillermo del Toro, Pan's Labyrinth, the Shape of Water, and Hellboy. Ugh. For, for no other reason but... Bringing us a real Hellboy. There you go. Number six, uh, num- Murray's number one, Taco Batiti. Boy, what we do in the shadows and hunt for the wilder people. How good was Boy? Boy oh, is brilliant. So, good. so, so, so brilliant. Uh, number five, Ken Russell. Yep. Salome's Last Dance, The Devils, Lair of the White Worm. Mm. Number four, who I think most people are thinking should have been my number one. Yes. George Romero. Ah. My favorite movie of all time, Dawn of the Dead, yeah, Martin, yeah, yeah. and in my top 10 movies of all time, the original Night of the Living Dead. There you go. Number three, Wes Anderson, with probably one of my favorite comedy dramas, drama comedies, or rom comedy comedies. Yeah. Rushmore, Life Aquatic, and the most recent, most Wes Anderson y film ever made, The French Dispatch. I'll, I'll spoil it real quick. I mean, Wes Anderson obviously would be on my top ten too. If he's not. You just named three movies. Those aren't the three. I movies know. I'm well, gonna even make. with Murray <laughs> said he picked for Taika. I think the only one we got the same was the Hunt for the Wilder People. Um, number two, Hirokazu Kurita, like father, like son, Kurita's Shoplifters, good. and the third Murder. Every single thing he directs is the most powerful film about family that you've ever seen in your entire life there's not a director alive that can bring family to the screen like he can and i will Mm. debate people till they're dead my number one i mean i I honestly have no idea right now it's the person that has made my mind as much as i thought christopher nolan mind was fucked david cronenberg's mind is way more fucked and I have been in love with him since the very first movie I saw of his. My favorite movie of his is The Brood. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Dead Ringers and the History of Violence. Dead Ringers. He so is good. completely undoubted. He cannot do anything wrong. I freaking love David Cronenberg. All right. That is a very, very, very good list. As was Murray's. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now, the fact that David Cronenberg did not make your list, I am anxious to know what you have to say. Yeah, that's that's crazy that he, I as I say, there are so many that didn't make my list that I like I We'll talk a little bit wrestled, about some of I wrestled our, with it. It's some like, of our other favorites. I could have made this honestly, I could have made this list like 2 weeks later and there might have been I mean, there the top top 5 are probably going to be there for sure, but I can I can make I I took people out. I put them back in. I took people out. I put them back in. I just, but did you go through each film? Because yeah, that's what I, I had to do. Everything. I had to go through each film. And some of the ones didn't make mine. Like, they've directed some of my favorite movies of all time, but I haven't seen enough of their content. Yeah. So like, there's some, like, well, we'll talk I've, in a minute. Let's I've, hear your list first. I've got, I've got one on here. Well, anyway. Let, let's hear your list first. Right, so number, we'll number 10, Anders Thomas Jensen. Um, the nice. Green Butchers, Adam's Apples, Men and Chicken. Yeah. I mean, everything he makes is just is good. The fact of the matter is, he's I think he's only directed, but no, everything he's, he's only done, he did like five or six, six. Maybe he's written like thirty. We've we've but, talked about him in but, the past, and he uh, just recently he's got the uh, writers uh, of Justice. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's so good. Um, number nine. Takashi Miike. Oh, see, there's one. I have not seen as much I, of his films as I want to. Yeah. I've seen probably eight or nine, I'm but pro- not I'm anymore. Pro- he's, he's directed like 30. Yeah, I, I know. I've, I've seen about I've seen, eight or nine. I've probably seen about 15. Yeah. Um, you know, Audition. He's audition so good. <laughs> that alone. Ichi the Killer, come on. And yep. the original One Missed Call, if you get a chance to watch it, it's just so, so good. No, you didn't like the happiness of the yeah. Katakuras? I thought I liked them all. <laughs> all right, number eight. Here is one of my controversial ones. Uh oh. I I've loved all three of his movies so much, but he's only directed three, three movies, movies and he's on my list. That's pretty crazy. I just it, he's done like they're brilliant. He's made three brilliant movies. The man's name is Martin McDonough. Wow. In Bruges. Seven Psychopaths and three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. That movie was so good. He yeah. was on my it's runner-up like, list. Yeah, I saw it, two of those. It's like... Yeah, he's I'm, great. He's great. And I know it's only three movies. And But why isn't he making more? Three three <sighs> billboards outside yeah, Ebbing was, was such a powerful ago. film. Yeah. It, was, it was like years ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's hope he makes more. Yeah. Pretty, pretty impressive to but make your top <laughs> ten list. Number seven. Over David Cronenberg. I know. What's that about? <laughs> Number seven, Paul Thomas Anderson. Yeah, no surprise. Yeah, so Hard Eight, Magnolia, There Will Be Blood. Um, just, uh, I really, P.T. Anderson's He's beauty. Awesome. Yeah. He's also undoubted. He is. Uh, number six, Park Chan Wook. That does not surprise me either. Isn't he also undoubted? Yes. <laughs> so Old Boy, yeah. come on. The original Old Boy. Oh, my. I watched that. Literally, I watched that with my jaw just dropped open for the last half of it because it was like just so it's like wow i watched it again like it's six months ago so awesome uh sympathy for mr vengeance and lady vengeance that was kind of his, his vengeance, yes, his trilogy. vengeance series yeah uh it was you know yes it's all so good which brings us to the top five bum 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 so i've got him a couple spots higher than you Mr. Alfred Hitchcock. Interesting. Uh, Psycho, North by Northwest, The Birds. Um, you know, I you guess, know what? I you know why there. I think I... he do- he didn't get higher in my list yeah. is because I I don't go back and see content. Right. Like once I've once I've I've digested everything Hitchcock's done, yeah. and so I'm kind of leaving him in my past. And I maybe should be bringing him forward. Maybe he should be higher on my list. But these other directors are still bringing stuff out. Yeah, it's, it's so. hard. It's hard. Hey, but he's dead. He did. <laughs> Number four, Pedro Costa. Oh, interesting. Yeah. He's on my, one of my runners up. So too. I don't know if any, if you get a chance, watch Blood. It's like his first movie, and the, seen the brilliance from this first movie. It's like, wow, this guy's going to be special. And then guess what? He was <laughs> um, in Vanda's room. Just so powerful and. One of my favorite movies of all time, Vitalina Varela, which I don't think you've watched yet. No, but I know now I can rent it. So it's on my list to watch. Number three, 
Darren Aronofsky. Oh, wow. Really? Requiem for a Dream. Nice. Black Swan. Nice. The Wrestler. Mm-hmm. So good. He's good, yeah. Yeah. Number two. He was number one until I actually <laughs> typed up the list. And then I couldn't I couldn't make him number one because the, 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 the number one that I've got, the guy just makes me so happy. All right. Well, so, so it's <laughs> apparently not Wes Anderson. So Wes Anderson's number one. Yes. And whoever this is, is number two. Exactly. So number two, Yorgos Alanthimos. Oh, wow. Uh, the favorite, come on, The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Deer. Yeah, just, it's so good. I just love that movie. And The Lobster. Um, yeah. This guy is tremendous. I see his name. I I see that he's coming. He's coming out with a new movie, and I'm just I'm just I'm just so psyched to see it. Almost as psyched yeah. as you would be to see a Wes Anderson film. <laughs> so, <laughs> number one is Wes Anderson. I mean, I can't get away from the fact that he, literally nobody exudes joy from the screen like Wes Anderson does for me. Like, yep. I'm never happier than the first time I'm sitting in the theater watching a Wes Anderson movie. I literally am just smiling ear to yeah. ear. I'm usually I'm it. usually giggling from frame one. Yep. I I just get taken in by the colors and the it's just everything so good. So okay, what was the first one that you actually got to see of his? Cuz you wouldn't have been really old enough to appreciate him when Bottle Rocket came out. So what was your first No, no, film? I would, I appreciated him. Well, Bottle Rocket was just like a year before Rushmore and I watched Rushmore and immediately went back and rented Right. Bottle okay, Rocket. right. That's what I'm saying though, but yeah. you wouldn't have been like super old when Rushmore came out. No, I wouldn't have been super old, yeah, but so, at the same time, Rushmore which is, just which blew, is kind of blew funny, me away. Because that's what happened to me, too. Actually, yeah. Rushmore was my first yeah. film of his. Then when I went and rent Bottle Rocket, I was like, this guy's a genius. Because Bottle Rocket was so... If you want to talk about... Doing, okay, I so mean, we've, been, your three. we've been doing a lot of James Caan lately. James Caan was never better than Bottle oh, Rocket. Oh, he was great. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so what were your top three films out of his... And this is this is the whole thing. I mean, you you named Fantastic three, Mr. Fox. <laughs> Fantastic never... Mr. Fox is my favorite, one of my favorite movies of all time. I've never. It makes me so happy. I could. I, it's there are movies that I can watch. I could watch that back to back for like two weeks. Like yeah. every every spare moment I had, I could pop it back on and just watch. Yeah, it that's again, Rushmore just, for me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel and the Royal Tenenbaums. Yeah, those, those would be. Tenenbaums. And that's it's tough. I mean, I. It's, getting your top three from this guy is so hard because they're all mondo like yeah. he does not make a bad movie no nope. so that is my top 10 so with interestingly i mean there's some you didn't get cronenberg so i mean we covered we covered the uh, like alejandro yordorovsky how does he not in our top 10 stanley kubrick didn't make stanley mine. kubrick Yep. Cohen Brothers. The Cohen Brothers, yeah. Like, well, they made Inside Lewin Davis, so that was a race. Yeah, I actually, Whatever. I actually had them. I took them off. Did you? They were on my list originally, the Cohen Brothers. Tim Burton. Yeah. Tim Burton was on my list. He yes. made Dumbo, so that took yeah. him off my list. Uh, ben, he would have made it. Ben Affleck? <sighs> Whatever. Sorry, what? Ben Affleck? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> ben, ben Affleck. Sir, I'm they, sorry. They, he they, almost I don't rocked un... my top ten. Made, With one they, film he directed? No, no. He's directed more than one film. What are you talking about? Oh, okay. He did two then. Two films, maybe? Academy Award winner. <laughs> Peter Jackson didn't make my list. Yeah. And Jackson? I love Peter Jackson. Uh, Sam Raimi. I almost yeah, Sam Raimi list. didn't make. John off. Waters. Uh, Kurosawa. Kurosawa didn't make my list. Um, Robert Rodriguez, but we know why that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As I say, Takashi bon Miki didn't make mine yeah. either. Bong Joon-ho. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Bong Joon Ho didn't make mine either. Yes, he made like and, two uh, movies. No, yeah. he's made tons. Oh. Uh, John Carpenter, John Carpenter Luke Besson, yeah. uh, Wes Craven. Craven, I'm craving some Craven Craven's right now. Craven, it's it's crazy. They're it's nice. Yeah. Uh, anyway, how can we how can we leave this segment to go into our next? I don't know. Oh, well, I guess we're gonna have to then. Eh? Well, I, before before we leave, it's too late. Oh, geez. yeah, that's it. We moved on. Too bad. Before we leave, nope. No, nope. they've moved before on. Before we leave, <laughs> there's just one that I that I think we need to bring up. Nope. Nabuana I G G. <laughs> the hell is that? Sorry. Oh, <laughs> yes. what Hollywood? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Whatever. And he's also a friend of mine on Facebook. There so you that's go. even better. Okay. Fine. Whatever. He's there. <laughs> he's so good. Been number one. Sure. 
Temperature rising. Vision blurring. Rage taking over. My rage this month, weekday, is very simple. Mm. It's going to be quick and painless. Perfect. And I'm going to do it in robot voice. No. My rage this week is the month of January. Yeah, that's a good one. I am not liking this month. It's the These same movies are rage filled. How can you tell it's January? <laughs> that's my rage. Just the month not, of January. Nothing but crap. It's like, all right, the movie studios, we got all this garbage that we haven't released. Ah, let's see. It's too late for award season. Right. You know what we're missing? All the Oscar bait is already come out. We're yeah. missing a robot movie with a pregnant woman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dump it. Yeah, no. The, the month and wait. Where, the month where movies a spy go movie to die. that's terrible. Yeah. No, I, uh, I am on board with that rage. January is ridiculous every year. That's it. Stay I don't want to add any more to stay it. Stay home and watch TV. <sighs> Boys season three. Uh. So my rage this week is going to be a bit of a spoiler. What? For the Rager Dare segment. Up uh, row. My rage this week is that I had to watch the repulsive Katherine Heigl and the doubted Gerard Butler in the same movie. That is a hellish agony that should not be experienced by anyone. One of them in a movie is atrocious. But both of them in a movie together is just inhumane torture to the viewer. There should be a law to stop this type of thing from happening. That is my rage this week. You're welcome. You want to bring me on, bitch? That's what you're going to motherfucking get. Uh, you're welcome. I like Gerard Butler. Oh, I know you do. I know Have you seen that terrible movie, Greenland? <laughs> Maybe you'll change your I mind. Not. Garbage. Rage. Subsiding. Pulse. Slowing. Anger fading. Well, hello, America, and thanks for coming. My name's Seth. What's yours? Hey, it's Jamal. And Stony. Have you ever had drag race withdrawal? You know the symptoms. Not enough glitter, eyelashes not staying glued down, and that red itchy rash that just won't go away. Uh, you should see a doctor for that. And the only prescription for your blues is more Thanks for Coming, the most magically gay podcast. With at least 150 podcasts, seven seasons of Drag Race coverage under our belt, and topical queer discussions, there's a little bit for everyone here. That's right. We're even featured on Cosmopolitan's list of top seven RuPaul's Drag Race podcasts that spill the hottest tea. Join us every week as we bring you a fun recap of the latest episode of whatever season we're covering. It'll make you feel like you're back on the couch discussing the latest episode of Drag Race with all your friends. Stop by thanksforcomingpodcast.com. For links to listen on your platform of choice, links to all of our social media and recent happenings. Oh, crrr. what are you waiting for? Go check us out, Hanny. Thanks for coming, a RuPaul's Drag Race podcast. All right. It's merman time. Mm. All right. Anton Yelchin. Ah. Actor, director, musician, photographer. Born in Russia in 1989. Only child of figure skating parents who immigrated to California. Diagnosed with cystic fibrosis at an early age and hated from nearly everyone but his closest friends. Appeared in 68 film and TV projects in a short 17-year career, including over 40 feature films. Taken way too soon in 2016 at the age of 27 
in a freak accident where he was pinned to a metal gate by his <coughs> Jeep, rolling back due it to wasn't, a factory re- defect. He didn't name his car Christine, though, did he? I don't think so. Okay. But no, it was a, it was a, it was a defect in the Jeep that basically they recalled him. I know. That. that was a um, sad, sad story. Those are the facts. It's not nearly the whole story. Love and Tasha is a documentary from 2019 that I recently saw. It premiered at Sundance and pretty much never got released, which is really too bad. Uh, this film is a portrait of the extraordinary life and career of actor Anton Yeltsin. Huh, from wow. all accounts, he was a happy, energetic, artistic kid who had unlimited energy despite having cystic fibrosis his whole life. He taught himself to play the guitar, wrote and performed his own music, uh, was in a band, spent a lot of time developing a vast photography career, uh, oh yeah, and acted in over 40 films in 15 years with the likes of Anthony Hopkins, Jodie Foster, Robin Williams, Robert Downey Jr., John Voight, Martin Lando, Glenn Close, Frank Langella, Motherfucking and Glenn Close. Patrick Stewart, just to name a few. Not to mention three successful Star Trek films as the boy genius Pavel Chekhov. This film also includes excerpts from Yelchin's own journal, voiced by his favorite actor, Nicolas Cage. Nice. He's got taste, too. This documentary by Garrett Price is a true love letter to the brilliant but short life of one amazing dude. I have to admit, I mostly knew him from Star Trek films. I was absolutely blown away by his phenomenal body of work. Hearts in Atlantis, Green Room, Only Lovers Left Alive, Like Crazy, Alpha Dog, Fierce People. There was ever a definition of mesmerizing, Anton Yelchin was it. Mm. Rest in peace, Antasha. And this also made me think of the past two weeks. We've lost Betty White, Sidney Boitier, mm. and Bob Sagan. Mm. In like two weeks. It's just terrible. It's just anyway, the season. Sorry, a bit of a downer this week, but I had to talk about this movie because it was so awesome. Nice. Cool. And where well, can got... people see it? Uh, where did you see I it? I saw it on Hollywood Suite, but I'm sure it's on demand somewhere. Nice. Anyway, that's what I got. Oh, Mer. Usually bring the joy. Uh, you I got do, a little bit of a tear in my yeah, eye. January kind of sucks. What can you say? It does. We anyway, already talked about that. Yeah. I guess I'm up again, aren't I? You are up. So the list. The list. This is hopefully the last time we have to talk to about Mr. James Gone. Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy. Hey, it's me. It's Jimmy. It's me, Jimmy. 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 All right, yes. I was forced to watch a movie. <laughs> to settle this we had taken that, enough that these two apparently can't decide for themselves, so they made me watch this. We we went through so much. We Pain had to and watch suffering. So many. You, you just had to watch you one. You didn't get to see any Frank you D'Angelo could have just films. Dropped it, and I wouldn't have had no problem with it. Anyway. No, but Murray, this is the important thing of why you're ta- taking this one. Because if Bryce or I would have watched this movie, the love of your life, or maybe the fourth love of your life, James Caan would be completely doubted at this moment. Anyway. Did, so he, did he make... I watched Out of the Blue. Was it a rage? Whatever problems this film has, has nothing to do with James Caan. Exactly. Not we're not, and we're not saying we're that. We're not saying that. For the three scenes he was in, for yes. a grand total of five minutes, yes. yeah, James Caan is James Caan. That's Fantastic, right. That's but good. how is the movie? If anything, I feel sorry when I watch him now. <laughs> okay. He's That's how we feel. <laughs> too old to be still be doing movies. He hobbles around on a cane yep. and slurs his speech. Yeah. The real problem with this film is Patricia Clarkson. And her aimless, incompetent detective. <laughs> like, this may be the worst detective story I've ever seen in film or TV show. Wait, you just saw the 355? <laughs> this is before I saw 355. And I didn't hate that movie much as you did. Um, yeah, bet, worst detective story I've seen in years, and I watch a lot of them. Uh, she actually thought Schrodinger's cat was about an actual cat. <laughs> That's <laughs> how so stupid she was. Like, I'm scientifically illiterate, and even I know what that is. <laughs> this film did not make me rage. 
However, Ugh, Murray, oh, you Murray. and your generosity. What did make me rage okay. Okay. was <laughs> having to sign up for Amazon Prime and ISC nice. both. Nice. I despise Amazon. Last time I ordered something from them, it, they sent the wrong size. Ah. And they're courageously packages in a snowbank on my deck. Nice. Uh, but I digress. Rest assured, I canceled both subscriptions as soon as I watched this mediocre film. Perfect. Only reason I did it was to stop these two from talking about James Caan anymore. Oh, he will be talking On again. or off, I just don't care anymore. <laughs> Leave the poor guy alone. I'll go back and watch my Las Vegas TV DVDs and remember when he was a badass. There and you that's go. that's all I have to say about it. Well, unfortunately, listeners, as much as... My cold, dead heart wanted to make him completely doubted because I can tell you this. If I know James Conn's in a movie, I will not be watching it going forward. But apparently Murray will. Maybe, maybe not. He survived. All right. No comment. (laughs) Done. But you know what? Now we don't have to talk about James Conn and we don't have to talk about Denise Richards. Yeah, thank goodness. (laughs) I miss that a lot. Oh, God, that was awful. That was That's pretty like awful. the worst month of my life. <laughs> oh, wait. Maybe it's the start of something new yeah. after your uh, rage for today. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. enough for the lists. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Last week on Rage or Dare, Bryce pulled two of his favorite actors <laughs> when he pulled the rom-com, The Ugly Truth. This week, Jim goes back to the trough of Bryce's slop bucket of rage. Let's check with Bryce and see if this film is old enough that it is before Gerard Butler was doubted, or just like pretty much all his films. <sighs> I, I have to say, I have never been more excited than I am right now in my life. Uh. I thought today could not get any better. I feel like I won the lottery today. Uh-huh. Please tell me what you thought of the movie, The Ugly Truth. The Ugly Truth is a failed experiment as it tries to combine a raunchy comedy with a chick flick. The result of The Ugly Truth is an ugly movie that has two of the most doubted actors in cinematic history. Gerard Butler and Katherine Heigl do not disappoint (laughs) as they solidify themselves as bad actors that pick bad scripts. Although I suppose if you're a bad actor, no one is going to offer you any good roles, or at least I would hope not. The film has cringe-inducing dialogue, which is meant to be funny, but completely misses the mark. It did have one line that was mildly amusing as Butler, as Mike Chadwick says. Mike Chadwick. Sounds like a real manly name. Yes, he says, and no one falls in love with your personality at first sight. (laughs) That's the funniest thing that was said in the whole thing. What are you talking about? Uh, That's how I always fall in love. There you go. Of course, this line was preceded by him saying that, you know, if you want a, a relationship, here's how you get one. It's called a Stairmaster. Get on it and get skinny. Ooh. And then the speech devolves from there. Um, this movie was truly horrible, and I knew it would be, as I had seen it before. <laughs> and nice. now, thanks to Rage Your Day There segment, I got to experience the torture that is the ugly truth once again. Movies of Rage. You're so welcome. Yeah. My job here is done, people. Mm. But you know what? Do you know what the greatest thing about this? That's not even the worst thing that's in my (laughs) book. I don't know about that. (laughs) Do you know that Katherine Heigl's been in a lot of movies? (laughs) Oh, so, no. You just, just, uh, you're just getting me to avoid your bag. (laughs) If there's you, a can't, way. you can't hide from the rage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now where's your stink bag? Is this your? That's, st- that's, that's my stink there's bag. There's nothing yeah, in it's this. A little empty. It is. There must be good stuff. I got, your I better, bag I is devoid re- of white. I can't believe there's only that much left in it. Yours, I gotta your bag is devoid that. of a lot of white stuff. Yeah, what's in there now? Oh, what's I've already that? seen this. Oh, good. First daughter. <laughs> How's that? How did you put that in there twice? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just took it out of the bag. Are you sure? Yes. I haven't seen this, though. And what is it? 
this may not be able to stay on in the in it though. What do you mean? Because remember, we made a rule. Yeah, you just gotta be able to find it. No, the other thing is. What is the other thing? If it's kid actors in it, if no, they're in, if still in high movie. school, it is a kid movie. It's got Mary Kate and Ashley in no, it. No, no, they're older. There, they're not that old. Yeah, they are. They are. Oh God, they're not old. Okay, so she was born in 1986, and we we said had to be out of high school. They're 18 in that movie. There. Are you, you 86? Monkey? And this movie was made 2004. 2004. 86 minus that would be 18. There, Wiener, Mother you got to watch it. But it was made a year before, wasn't it? I don't want to watch stop. this. I don't. They are this. they are mature young adults at that point, which makes it something that you how have to dare watch. you use my own words. <laughs> So you enjoy New York Minute and you enjoy it with a smile on your face. And if you're lucky, Catherine Heigl will show up. She might that's that's very quite possible that she might be in it. Okay, well, you know what you know what that means. We're gonna be going away for some delicious, delicious rage. <clears throat> or should I say, we will be back next week with more rage. Thanks, Ragers, for listening. Super Rage love to our, what that used to be our members, but hopefully they'll come back. <laughs> Julian from It Goes Down in the PM podcast. James and Philip for their continued support. To our extended Film Rage crew and family, who you know where you can find them on our show notes. Find us on social media everywhere at Film Rage YYC. Check out everything Film Rage at FilmRageYYC.com, including our merch site, which stuff on Tee Public is on sale right now, and you can get your award show merch, which we have got up now. Ah, make sure to wear your award shirt for all things and send us pictures of it. We are always wanting to make this a raging blast for all listeners, so please comment, like, and subscribe, and send us emails to filmragecalgary at gmail.com. Dared us to see terrible movies to feel our rage, but no matter what you do, just make us rage. Please? Please. That's it for this week. Rage on. Rage on.